Alright folks, Airstream Restoration. We're going into full battle mode. My intent is to get the rot cut out. This is going to be my main focus area. <clears throat> Not too concerned about this side. Uh, it is rusty. Um, but it's not so bad that it's uh, structural. I mean, it's still solid enough, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna paint that up. Maybe use the last of my spray paint. <clears throat> but what I want to do today is I'm gonna cut this one out. I'm not sure where. Maybe right there. And then I'm gonna bridge that with a uh, angle iron right across. So I'm gonna get my uh, sawzall with a metal blade and try and cut that whole section out. All that junk, and I'll have to cut this one out too. So I gotta pull the wiring off it. <clears throat> That's the first thing. Let's see if I can pull the wiring off here. Can you let me? I might have to cut those off. Because there's rivets in the minute to drill them out, actually. I'm gonna go get my drill, and uh, <clears throat> we'll come back to this here. So here's the uh, battle plan implements. I've got my sawzall. Where to put my blade? Got my metal blade here. I'm going full metal blade. This is a bi-metal uh, wood nail blade. So I got to get that puppy on. on my uh, Black & Decker cordless set. Love this set. I did a whole video on... Um, as that loud car goes by. Wow. I did a whole video on my Black & Decker cordless tools. Um, they really... For me, they really, really work great. I'm sure they wouldn't work for a guy that uses them every single day, but for what I use them for, they're great. And I've got my battery converter, so I can use my Makita 18 volts on these. Here's the angle iron I'm gonna use. This is from an old single uh, bed frame. Um, I don't know if I'll need to use two of these or not. I might be able to get away with uh, one of them cut into two pieces, because it's only the one side rail that I need to deal with. <clears throat> so one on top, one on bottom. And that should provide a, a strong enough uh, f uh, fra frame replacement, I think. So this is just straight up steel. I'll have to uh, grind that off. I've got a paint wheel on, on my drill here. So I can clean it off. I think I can get the, there in the with the welder. In there with the welder, I should say. Um, it'll be a little bit sketchy. I think I'm going to have to take some of the aluminum off the bottom. I haven't decided exactly what I'm doing there yet. <clears throat> but... For the immediate, I'm going to go ahead and try and uh, sawzall some of the uh, rot off. So let me get at that and uh, then I'll get back to you. dust in here and, and it's pretty warm in here so I'm gonna let's see if I can open this. I'm getting my knife or something. I do have both windows open, so that'll get the heat going up and out. So I'm gonna switch this thing over to wide angle. It's on medium angle, so wide angle you should be able to see a bit more, hopefully. All right, now that I've shaken all the guts out of this thing, I need to go and crash this down. So I took out that rotten member. Now it's just hanging there, and I want to just basically drop that whole piece of not 
sure what all that's attached to. I may have to do some more cutting up here. Looks like some more rivets here. I mean, this is all wrecked back here, so I'd be happy enough just to do away with that, honestly. Put a new piece of aluminum or something there. Even just leave it off, and that way I can get at the frame. Because that's where the frame sticks out to the bottom anyway, so if I just cover this with plywood, paint the bottom of it, I'll have access to the frame there and I can keep it painted and keep it maintained. That may be easier than having the frame disappear into the aluminum, which is a pain in the neck. The aluminum is great, as long as you don't have stuff rusting out. As soon as stuff starts rusting out, then you got to start dropping the aluminum and that's a pain in the neck to deal with. It. underneath and see what there it looks like maybe there's another cross member under there let's go take a look from the uh, bottom side look here. from the bottom side I should get my whippersnapper out here okay there is another uh, cross member there I'm gonna get rid of that I'm gonna cut that out there's the back of this so this is pretty holy um, I might just take this whole piece out to be honest uh, I don't know if the frames well I guess the frame wouldn't be sitting on it much right now um, well, I guess it's still firm. This is still firm at the top where it's not rotten. Anyways, I, I'll, I'll have to go in there and test and see how thick that metal is. And, uh, cut out basically as much as I can. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna zip this with the, uh, Sawzall. <clears throat> drop that guy right off. And cut the other side of this, this piece here. Cut that guy off. And I can always put new pieces of that on. They just bolted that on. So we'll see, uh, we'll see where we get. By the way, if you didn't watch the last uh, restoration episode, go back and check it out. I painted the front tongue. That, uh, I don't know, to me that looks brilliant. To me that looks, no, it doesn't look brand new, but I mean it looks amazing. A little paint job gets rid of all the rust. This handle doesn't even work anymore, but uh, you know. I think it did an amazing job. Just a can of spray paint, rust paint. Oh, missed, the, missed the corner there, but otherwise this uh, is really good. There was a little bit of rust down here, so I took care of that, but I don't know, I think it looks great. Um, I didn't do a super stellar job cleaning everything. I did some wire brushing, but that's about it. But I don't know, I think that looks really, really good for a, um, a 1965 trailer. That rust paint really, really cleans it up. try and just take that bolt off now I'm looking at it instead of trying to hack because I don't have a lot of room to hack hacksaw so last resort I'll do that but I'm gonna try and get that bolt off yeah that worked <laughs> two turns of the uh, ratchet and it just broke off broke the nut so it's nice and clean nice clean break it works for me so I'm gonna see you can see the corrosion in the uh, aluminum so I don't care I'm just gonna pull this all out and I'm gonna leave part partial amount exposed basically um that that way i can keep uh keep tabs on it well now that i look through there you can see the holes in the, in the, the frame members i don't know what i'm gonna do so i mean there's lots of holes anyways that animals could get through so i don't know how sealed it really is uh, i see a propane line down there i guess Anyways, we'll take this out and get to work here. Like I say, this this side I think is good. Fairly solid. And the bumper solid on this side. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna take all this aluminum out and probably just trash it. It's just it's just too corroded to work with. So even if I tried to put that into something, it wouldn't be wide enough anymore. And uh, then it's just too too thin and corroded to actually use.
There you are. Clean as a whistle. Not quite. Getting there though. So, you can see some maybe some rest holes on the other side a little bit. I gotta take that uh, heating pipe out as well. Cut, cut more of this down. This is this is pretty solid actually though. All things considered, that main beam there. I mean the the the. the uh, Bumper is not welded on the bottom of that main beam, but that main beam, I think I can reuse that. Just put a, a bottom piece of angle iron on there. I think that will pass inspection. <coughs> got some, uh, there's a bug there. Got some plywood I gotta get out. Now, these ones, these uh, air streams. These rested on uh, the plywood in the corner, so far as I understand. So, getting the plywood back underneath is going to be the tricky part. Because I almost have to jack up the uh, jack up the skin. Maybe I can jack it right here and uh, squish the squish the plywood back in. That's looking good, though. <coughs> I mean, it's not looking good, but. I'm making progress. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut like this is well yeah I think this is fairly solid here. I'm going to I'm going to cut this down here, cut this back, and I'm going to put an uh, angle iron all the way back to there. Have it traveling all the way up there and tie it back into here. So I'll cut this right along there, cut that nice and clean. And put that angle iron in there. In there. <coughs> so I mean, for the most part, this is still quite intact. Like you can see, see the shiny metal right there. And uh, even on the bottom, it's rusty. But here's where it really gets bad, because that's where it protruded from the trailer. <coughs> and of course, all the uh, all the uh, rivet joints spots are pulling off. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of them pulling off. I see down there, and maybe I did half that by my cutting. So I'm gonna have to tie those up. <clears throat> you can see that frame there is not too rusty either. It's it's looking fairly good. The very bottom a little bit rusty, but not bad. This one here a little bit more rusty, but again, it's intact. Um, it's not awesome, but uh, you know, you, they won't see that. It's not going to be part of the inspection. They can't see that piece. It's, I mean, it's structure. It's uh, solid. Oh, I think I started cutting through that piece right there. So I need to pull this junk out. It's got some praying ants in there. I don't know how I'm going to get that out. I think I might as well take this piece out because this was, piece was kind of holding in the black tank. So I might as well cut that guy out next. Uh, he is bolted in there. But. I think I'm just gonna get my sawzall and cut that. <clears throat> this piece. This piece looks good. Nothing wrong with that piece, I don't think. I think there's maybe. That's a screw hole. What's this over here? Okay, there's a rust hole there. See the rust hole? <clears throat> it's alright. I could put maybe just put a quick plate on that. And you can see down there where the, the uh, bumper's off the end, so I can weld that. That's not a problem. I'll weld that back on. Got spray paint under there too. All right. So the next course of action: take this frame out. I'll need a cross member on the bottom to tie up that aluminum. Maybe what I could even do is uh, <coughs> cut that aluminum and actually wrap it back over. That's a good idea, actually. Since it's on there, I don't know if it'll bend or not because it's kind of riveted here. But uh, bend it back around here and rivet it to here, which uh, and then sandwich it with the plywood over top. So maybe I won't do that. So what am I going to do next? This is the part where I don't want to start anything next. I'm going to try and get this this thing out. 
because that's got to come out. That's one of the big disgusting things I got to get out of there. All right, well that wasn't too bad. Um, the ants didn't go very far in there at all. It's just in the front section. I can leave the rest of that in there. Um, not really too concerned about it. It's just it's just gonna sit there. It's it is dead weight, but what can you do? So my next tackling, next project to tackle. I'm gonna drill out the holes where those wires are, so that I don't cut them, and then uh, we'll get to <coughs> sawzalling the rest of that out. Oh. Take a look at that. Go outside, see how that works. I guess it's not on a hinge. I don't know. Ah, huh. interesting. Ah, wow, some big fuses went in there. Okay, but that was might have been for the, <coughs> the furnace and that sort of thing. I'm not sure what that's for. So this was how does that stay in there? I don't know how that stays in there. That's weird. Maybe that's why it was screwed in there. Oh, you know what? The top slides up into a into the hole there. And then the latch on the bottom keeps it shut. So I don't have the, the key for that. That's interesting though. I'm gonna put that boot screw back on before I, before I lose it. It's good to know though. I might just leave that off for now just for airflow while I'm working on it. I'm not too worried about stuff getting into the trailer at this point. Leave that to the side here. Let's see. Uh, there's my city water. There, the travel trailer is vo is wired for 110, 120 voltage, 125 volts. Do not use other voltages. Yes. So it's North American. That's what it's saying. Don't tra take this travel trailer to the UK and try and use the 220. Absolutely. So, but that's interesting to see. Like I said, I think some of these bigger cables are for the furnace and uh, the appliances, water pump maybe, I guess. I don't know that I necessarily need those, but interesting to know that that's in there. So, all right, let's move on to the next step. All right, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna put the jack underneath the center, well, maybe the corner uh, of the skin. Maybe just jack it a tiny bit off the frame, see if it's gonna budge. Um, and then I can really get to work at the frame because uh, if I weaken that frame that the skin may just fall down. I don't want that. Um, I, I reckon this cross beam here holds a bunch of the weight of it as do the other cross beams. But probably a lot of the main weight is going to be held on these these two uh, U-beams. U-beams I guess they are. Not, they're not I-beams. U-beams? C-beams? I don't know. So I'll jack that up and just see if it budges and then I can get the rest of the plywood out from under there. You can see the plywood's still stuck in there. Hopefully there's no ants left in there. <clears throat> and then uh, and then I'll saws all the rust out of there. And then I'll be pretty much ready to go to uh, get another to weld in a new piece. Hoping I can weld in here without stuff catching on fire. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out. I'll have to uh, have a fire extinguisher here. All right, let's get to jacking it up. All right, plan two, plan B. I don't know that I can jack it up. I don't know that I have a good spot where I'm not going to crush aluminum. <coughs> and and I'm not just going to push up all the uh, stuff that I need to get out there. So let's just try and put that out there.
You know? No, maybe I can try it. Like this, this beam is bending here. Um, so even with the, uh, yeah, maybe I'll fix the rail and then I'll finish cleaning out the, uh, <clears throat> the plywood there. Taking a little bit of pressure off, anyways. A little bit of pressure off the beam. So this one sits on the plywood. So I gotta gouge all the plywood out of there. And uh, as long as I get the plywood under here, to be honest, I'm not too concerned about getting it under there at this point. Because uh, it'll be sitting on here. So I'm not too concerned about it. Um, so what am I gonna do? I'm gonna get right to work on this thing. Because I'm wasting time. I need to get going here. So I'm going to cut this. Where am I going to cut this? See, now i got aluminum on this side I need to deal with. That I don't want to get into. I don't want to... I don't want to have to try and replace that. So... I'm going to try and go up from the bottom here. Get into this a little bit. <clears throat> and then start cutting across. I want to do with this one here. Because I really need to cut this piece off here. Maybe I'll just maybe I'll just smash that one off. Not worry about that. Because the three quarters plywood's gonna be it's gonna be good enough in that section. No one's walking there. At the end of the day we'll have a bed there or something. quick little thing is um, I took this piece out as an exploratory hole in the front which is one of my earlier restoration episodes so I'm putting it back in what I'm doing is I put a couple of cross braces in in the corners there because there's no metal there holding it up so I'll just screw it right down I'm gonna vacuum it out with the uh, shop back here get rid of all the insulation because I don't need insulation it's nice to have but uh, I'd rather it not be messy like that and it's you know it's good the rest of the way so it's not like we do extreme winter camping anyways and what I'll do later is I'll drill some holes through spray some ant poison down and whatever else um, just to sit there for any other bugs that get in there but otherwise for now I'll close this up with screws I can always pop it open again now that I got screws in it I'm gonna put some gloves on here and take out this uh, insulation because it's getting in my way Vacuum it out, and then we'll put the uh, put the lid back on. All right, now that's done. Get a good look at uh, what it looks like down here. You can see where I did some spray painting, just to add a bit more. I probably could lift this whole thing and. And uh, sandblast the whole frame, but uh, we'll leave it as is for now. It's not bad. It's not gonna, over the life that I have it, it's not gonna be too bad. The next person can uh, do a full restoration frame, drop the frame, and everything.